Welcome to Flow State, a podcast designed to help you focus. And I'm your host, Bobby Light, here to provide the soundtrack to your work. You're listening to the talk only version of Flow State. In this version, I've removed the music so you can re-listen to or share a specific topic I've discussed. Eventually, I may even expand on the topics with longer talk-only episodes, discussing deep work, neurology, peak performance, and of course, the science of flow. Enjoy! No trait is more useful, more essential for survival, and more likely to improve the quality of life than the ability to transform adversity into an enjoyable challenge. That is a quote from Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, the man who developed the concept of psychological flow. This ability to transform adversity into an enjoyable challenge is something I'm learning firsthand and finding very difficult in my life right now. Why? Because none of the standard forms of structure and organization I grew up with exist in my life. I don't have a full-time job with clear performance metrics, nor am I in school with a clear course curriculum. All of my goals and metrics are self-defined. If I don't deliberately create the right ones, I'm in for a world of frustration or a world of boredom. Mihai's research of flow started with his desire to understand human happiness. While held in a concentration camp during World War II, he was surprised to find many of the prisoners still managed to create meaning and satisfaction in their daily life despite being in the most inhumane circumstances. Mihai would later develop the concept of flow, which would explain how these prisoners used more flow experiences to find meaning and satisfaction. For example, the prisoners that managed the situation most effectively were those that regularly played chess. His research would also find that the most successful and fulfilled people are those that consistently create meaningful challenges for themselves throughout their life, hence experiencing flow often. In the last two weeks, I emphasized the importance of letting yourself struggle and the effective use of your working memory, but this alone is not enough to experience flow. When all that's left is our complete focus on a task, it's still quite possible to never experience flow leading to either boredom or frustration, both of which will likely lead you back to distraction, the thing we fought so hard against in the first place. You might blame yourself for being undisciplined and easily distracted, but remember that it may not be a problem of discipline, but rather a problem with the challenge or goal you've set for yourself. Whether it's with your job, education, or personal goals, if you find yourself with a lot of self-doubt and frustration, or you find yourself bored and apathetic, it's quite likely that the balance between skill and challenge is mismatched. Remember, flow state appears when the challenge matches your skill. If the challenge is too high, you will be anxious. But if the challenge is too low, you will be bored. It is that sweet spot between boredom and anxiety where your flow state, your peak performance lives. So even when the distractions are removed, we must choose our goals wisely. I have to say, while understanding this truth gives me clarity, it also gives me anxiety, knowing that I need to become the professor and student of my own life's work. Not an easy task, but This is the trait that Mihai refers to, to turn life into an enjoyable challenge. If you've ever played a video game, you probably remember this experience of flow. 
The most successful video games are those that continually challenge and reward the player. A game that consistently pushes their players into flow state. Unlike a video game, in the real world, we must create our own challenges. Even if you have a full-time job or are in school, there is significant scope for self-direction, which, when managed well, can lead to more flow experiences and long-term progress towards mastery. I have a friend that used to tell me all he wanted in life was to be content, to have a nice home, to be married with kids, and a well-paying, steady job. To have achieved the American dream. Unfortunately, Mihai's research proves this alone won't lead to a very fulfilling life. Most of the people I know who have quote-unquote achieved the American dream are either brutally stressed out or bored and apathetic. But there are a few of them, whether they've achieved the American dream or not, that continue to find meaning and fulfillment. What's the difference, you ask? Well, it comes down to their ability to create for themselves challenges and opportunities for growth. Opportunities for flow experiences. Mihai, in his book Flow, shares a really cool example of a nomadic tribe in Kenya called the Samburu. This tribe would change locations every few decades as a proactive strategy to prevent overexploitation of the land and resources, a way to sustain the health of their environment over the long term. Some may view this as risky when it has finally solved its basic needs for food, shelter, and safety, why uproot this? But on a psychological level, this proves to be extremely valuable in creating meaning and fulfillment among the tribe as it took on a new challenge. In other words, this was a self-created challenge that not only benefited their environment, but led to the growth of the individual and the tribe. Whether they knew it or not, this tribe was constantly creating opportunities for flow. A fulfilling, satisfying life is a life that exists between challenge, boredom, and flow. At an early age, this comes easy as our parents and society provide the path. Over time, the responsibility of creating this path shifts into our own hands. There are no gurus. Guiding your flow state is a skill that becomes increasingly important to develop for yourself. I honestly struggled with creating this episode. When I sat down to write, I simply set the bar too high with the idea that I had to, quote, say something profound. You can imagine the writer's block I was faced with. Thankfully, I caught it and adjusted the challenge level to something more manageable to simply pour out my unfiltered thoughts. And finally, the words started to flow out onto paper again. How do you guide yourself? Or maybe you still enjoy the guidance from your parents, professors, or colleagues. There is nothing wrong with this, but I encourage you to reflect on whether their guidance aligns with your internal compass. Thanks for listening today, and until next time, keep on flowing.